<laughs> What's happening party people? Today we're gonna cover frequently asked questions and just we have got all kinds of crud to clean. Get this barrel worked on. I got so much stuff. Looks like I've got two sheep, three bears, two pigs skinned, two pigs unskinned, and over a hundred horn cores and jaws. So I'm just gonna get this heated up. I'm gonna get it rolling and I'm just gonna work through rotation for the day. And as I run into things, I'm gonna use them as an example of uh, just frequently asked questions, what to do in a particular situation if you're new to it, um, why we save horn cores and pieces like that. We're going to look at all of it. Hope you enjoy. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back. If you're a return viewer, thank you for being here. I love you. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Please join us for the first rule in skull cleaning. Remove all the meat and tissue. Never let a skinned skull sit out of water, not until you're drying it for its final process. Always keep a skull hydrated, even if you can't work on it right now, stick it in a barrel and keep it wet. Next tip, don't boil anything you don't have to. I get a lot of animals with a lot of neck. The easiest way to trim it off, turn it upside down and the two bones that come off the back of the skull, just run your knife down till you hit that atlas joint and then turn it over and do the other side. You can a lot of times add pressure and hyperextend it off. Chuck that neck meat. Don't cook anything you don't have to. Remove, then hydrate. Because we're here and I got the footage, I'm going to show you how to skin one with the flesh on. This is a wild hog. You want to take off everything. Opposite if you were going to have it mounted. So if you're going to have this animal mounted, you would take as little meat off as possible. In a European or the skull style, you want to take as much meat as you can with the hide. I'm talking the tongue, the eyes, the back of the head, everything. This pig also got shot in the back of the head. So when you identify that it's got skull damage, take a photo immediately and let your client know. You don't want to be held liable for damage to a skull because most people can't tell there's damage until the hide comes off. Once everything is skinned and either in the boil or hydrating, 
clean up your mess. Make sure your work environment is clean. And I like to keep a wet surface area that keeps things from drying and adhering to the ground. Keep that workspace neat and tidy. Because I've got so many different critters in the pot, I'm using zero soap because I have horned animals in there. My first agenda is to get the horns off these sheep. I'm using a big heavy duty sand hammer and I'm hitting the base of the horn where it meets the skull cap. The idea is to shock that membrane and take that horn off there. On this sheep, you see how the horn is damaged? That means the horn core is damaged as well. So that one's gonna be extremely difficult to get off. Once you get it off, you'll be able to see, as I'm showing you here, just know that it's gonna be tough. If you get one that's really giving you fits, hold it against the concrete and hit it on the top of the head on the horn core down, and it's gonna send all that inertia through the skull and they'll slide right on off. Once it's off, I take a sawzall and I cut the horn core down. It's a little bit less to wash and I like to keep those horn cores to use in all kinds of side projects and test products. It's just a really neat thing to have laying around. Your horns are like bones. Everything has to come off. They need to be neat and clean in and out. So I rinse them inside, I rinse them outside, and I set them out to dry. While I was working on those horns, the heads were in the pot boiling. I'm looking for the skin above the nose to split and separate from the bone. The rule is you want to take your power washer and spray into every hole, every orifice, every cloaca, anywhere there's meat or tissue, spray in there and make it go away. Same principles apply here for bears, pigs, sheep, deer, elk, antelope, anything. We're talking about cleaning bone. Now, I also like to remove the earbuds or what I call the auditory bull. I stick a screwdriver in and pop out that loose bone tissue and then wallow out that hole with a wafer bit. And on pigs, I pop out that little nodule below the skull there and I wallow that thing out. What that does is it loosens up all those pieces that are connected in and around that loose chunk of bone, and it makes for a much cleaner process. Now, staying on task with the tips and frequently asked questions, I love these pasta strainers. I buy these from a restaurant supply by the house. It is the greatest little basket to boil loose teeth, small jaws, little animals, it's called a pasta strainer, and I buy them by the dozen. With all the pieces and parts removed, we're going to wash all the excess meat off the bone. 90% clean, and then we're going to throw it in the color batch. All right, so far, so good. So we're going to put all the skulls that have been cleaned back into the pot, and I'm going to add what I call the white bone creations mix. This is a 50-50 mixture of hydrogen peroxide and water. Now I'm gonna show you the bottle. There is a link in the description. This product is called Aquasilk. It's 27% by volume peroxide mixed 50-50. And again, that's a general rule. And then I'm gonna bring that product and all those skulls to a boil. For me on the West Coast, that takes about 12 to 15 minutes. As soon as it comes to a boil, I am gonna shut it off and I'm gonna rinse the skulls clean. That is whitening and degreasing. 
If you ever struggle to get teeth or tusks out in the initial boil, do it in the color batch. Remove them then because the peroxide will loosen up all the tissue. Just make sure you're shaking out all your nerve endings and washing where the teeth are. Just another rad trick with the pasta strainer. I take a latex glove and I slide it over the top with all the teeth in the bottom, and then I pull it out and just power wash through the screen. I never lose a tooth and they are brilliant white when I'm done. Circling back real quick. So whenever something comes out of the color batch, I like to wash it everywhere. Whenever you're washing into a hole on the skull, there should be goo or moisture coming out of another place on the skull. That's a great way to get it clean. Once it's clean completely, put it back in the color batch for a few minutes to make sure the chemical hits every piece of exposed bone. After a few minutes, remove it, rinse it, and let it air dry. I always store my pigs sheep, goat, everything nose down so the water will run out of that nasal cavity. Once it's semi-dry, I'll turn it upright and let it finish drying in front of a fan. One more hot tip, if you ever have noses or bones that's pulling apart, I like to use a hair tie in order to pull it back together and let it dry. It will harden and be rigid without ever gluing. The hair tie is the key. There's no dyes, no chemicals, and it holds really, really well. All right, last step, I'm gonna wash these horn cores clean, and then I'm gonna take a suds degreaser, uh, a ZEP 505, and some Dawn dish soap, and I'm gonna scrub the whole work environment, get everything nice and sanitary, and then tomorrow we'll pick up once everything's dry. What's up, everybody? Come here, Beans. You guys, my poor little, come here, bye. Come here, come here. Come here. <laughs> my poor uh, little beans lost his beans today. He's wearing a cone in the whole nine yards. Come on, beans, we gotta show him. Look at this poor little guy. Hello. When he barks, it echoes in there. I'm just kidding. I know it's not funny. But I wanted to see you, so I figured I'd just say what's up. What's up? Okay. All right, y'all, we have been here before. This is a recap. It's a couple of little short tidbits. Everything here is drying or is dry. So I'm gluing teeth back in. Always, always, always use clear glue. Just realized right now that I always say always, always, always. That means I mean it. So clear glue, never white glue. It'll show contrast between the whites as bone ages and takes on its natural color, uh, the glue won't change. So I've glued teeth back in these bears. The bears turn out really nice. The pigs turn out nice, but they're classic pigs. So in the jawline here, see the oil there? And that's just wafer thin back there. Nothing you can do about that other than soak it in acetone for weeks or clear water for weeks. I don't have the luxury of weeks. These have got to go back to the client stat. So that's fine. This will all in a couple of weeks just kind of blend into this perfect this perfect color. All right. Um, same thing here with these sheep, right? So horns are going to go back onto horn cores. Right now everything's going to get mop and glowed. I'll show you one portion of that and then we'll pick up on the next piece. You ever want to see the inside of a pig head? If you're ever wondering why your pigs are not clean, this is the brain cavity. This is the void you can't get to, right? This pig was headshot, so I just cleaned it, but look. Right, that's the stuff you can't get to. 
don't beat yourself up the skulls that aren't perfect there's only certain things you can do chemically all good pig dunzo another tip for um, uh, gluing back teeth in never 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 glue wet bone always wait for that bone to dry then glue it and then I like to mop and glow after the glue that way I don't get an extra shiny glue mark and I'm talking about when you're gluing back in teeth or putting sinus cavities back together um, or I don't mean sinus cavities I mean like nose bones teeth things of that nature um, and then you know I'm always 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 trying oh, three always again crap I need to work on that um, now I have to say it again I'm always looking to better a process or be a little more streamlined. I don't really so much care about costs. I'm never trying to shortchange somebody's trophy. Um, but in doing that, I'm using a different glue than Bondo. I'm using a faster drying, uh, maybe equally as hard setting, but a clear epoxy. I'm going to show it to you now. And sometimes I'll dry mop and glow so it doesn't get too shiny. I used to use a cotton towel. Now I use a paper towel. The reason I don't use a cotton terry towel anymore because I would wipe it, not catch it, and when it would dry, I'd see little fibers of that towel on the horn. Then I had to go back through and remove it and just slowed everything down. This product is made by JB Weld. Yeah, so essentially it's a resin and a hardener, and I take and I cut that tip down so it's big. I give it two big squirts, I mix it, and then I set the horn cores in this. That way I don't ever have to worry about pink hardener showing from the Bondo. It's easier to mix, it's less odor. I love it. Y'all, I just finished a podcast today with a gentleman named John Stallone. I did one a week and a half ago with Jay Scott, and it's uh, it's funny how it's small world, uh, you know, they're friends, they're from the same region I had met Jay years ago. It's just, it's just nice. I love the collective effort of information, and it will forever be an honor to me to be on a podcast. The podcast I did with John Stallone was pretty much step-by-step step here for his audience. What we do, skinning, a lot of the what you're going to see in this video, I've sent him to use in his podcast additionally. The Jay Scott podcast, we've had this discussion before. So we got into the 10 rules and suggestions for filming hunts and sharing hunts. I, I, I had a good time on that podcast, uh, well, both of them really, but he let me kind of just share my opinions on making hunt films and sharing stuff. Um, I encourage you to listen to both of those. If you, I think if you put in my name or White Bone Creations, you'll find either one of them. Um, Jay Scott and John Stallone. <laughs> Beans, what are you doing, bud? I wanted to show you something I posted on Instagram that didn't go very far because nobody really knew what I was talking about. So this is a normal deer jaw. Let's do this. This is a normal deer jaw. Can you see like the height of the teeth and all that stuff? Look at this jaw right here. Are you kidding me? Can you see the difference in the height of the teeth? I will forever, forever be fascinated with things like that. I don't know if it's a genetic makeup or what, but um, it's crazy. So, in the first part of the video, I asked, does anybody save horn cores and jaws? Let me rephrase. I said that on Instagram, but I mentioned it in the video too. I do, I don't like to throw away anything for a few reasons. All this kind of decor, which is really extra parts that I think look cool in a glass jar. My daughter suggested this. Give your uh, viewers a backdrop for the YouTube stuff. So I put this stuff together, and to be honest, I love it when I come out and see it. Because every part of one of those animals I had some sort of affiliation with. Whether it was cleaning the skull or picking it up off the ground. I can use it for reference. I can use it for spare parts. The other part is, so there's there's a, a mandible, right? A, a jaw bone. That's, this one's just insanely unique. And I've literally been through thousands and thousands of jaw bones. There's a hundred and something of them here. And that's not including what I have kind of in storage. 
But the horn core itself, I think, is fascinating. Check this out. So this looks like like a wild hair. And this is ultimately the inside of that sheep. It's not exactly the same sheep, but right? But ultimately it did that. Kind of cool, right? So here's what I do. I save these and they're heavy. The cattle are hollow and light. Sheep are solid. They're solid core. Sheep and goats are solid. Anyway, I love them. I love to be able to just kind of put one in a, in, a, in a young person's hand and say, hey, can you tell me what that is? When you start to get into this, this bristly, uh, I'll, I always hate to, when you get into that bristly bone, it, it's semi-fascinating. So what's happening there is there's a membrane on there and it's growing and that horn core is being fed off, or that horn is being fed off the core. Long story short, I can use all these excess for practice dyeing, uh, meaning if I had to put a color on this bone, if I thought, oh man, it'd be a cool idea to stain a skull with wood stain, right? I can just try it here before I ever did it on something that I wanted to save. Essentially, it's a beautiful excess piece. It's a great conversation piece. I use them when I'm trying new degreasing methods. But where I'm going with this one today, for those of you that are in a different country, I get so many questions about mop and glow. Hey, I don't have mop and glow in Australia, in parts of Europe, in the Middle East. And I've had those questions from every one of those locations. I don't really know what you have there um, because I'm not there. And if I did, I'd show you. But if you save a piece like this, and you go to your local grocery store and you look for a flooring sealer. Let's just see what this says. Multi-surface floor cleaner. Flooring soap and coating. Right? So if you just went and you found what was there, you could try them on the horn cores and see what happens. Give it a week, give it a month, give it five minutes, and you can go through and look and be like, ah, that's perfect. I can use that in lieu of American-made Moth and Glow or wherever it comes from. So, I will try that, then I'll take a different product and try a few more and then look at them next to each other and see. Horns are crazy tough. Cut your horn covers. Don't leave them long because you think it's cool. You're gonna hide them with horns. Cut them off, gives you an opportunity to wash in there. What you need is just a little bit of structural piece to put those horns on. All right, what am I missing? We're going to do a little drying, we're going to glue up those horns, we're going to close this thing. Thank you for watching. Sorry for all the talking. Alright y'all, be proud of your work. Own that skull business, do a good job, take care of your clients. Thank you for watching.